Hello and welcome to episode 28 of the Cloud Computing for the C-Suite show with Brad Nelson, an internationally recognized world's number one cloud industry expert and thought leader, David Linthicum. This show is sponsored by Nelson Hilliard, cloud computing recruitment specialist, placing great people in cloud, IoT, fintech and AI. In this week's show, David and I will be talking about who is leading digital transformation at the most forward-thinking organizations across the globe and what are the most significant roadblocks to their progress. And make sure you stay until the end to get David's top three tips on digital transformation for your organization. Hi, Dave. It's great to have you on the C-Suite show this week. Yeah, it's great to be here, Brad. This is a great topic because I get questions about this all the time from people in the C-Suites. Yeah, it really is. And I'm, I am so glad that we're covering this one off this week. It's fantastic. So, you know, let's open the question up or open the show up with this question, should I say. Should digital transformation be part of the role of the actual CEO? Yeah, I think it should. But the problem is that most CEOs don't know what the hell digital transformation means. And so it's kind of funny. It's one of those words that really hasn't been defined in any kind of a, of a static way. And so everybody has their own interpretation for what it means. And to, to me, it means about automating really kind of the last mile that we've yet to automate in the businesses. And so we've automated the business system with the ability to kind of take the manual processing and the error prone manual processing out of the things and the ability to do, you know, things like, you know, robotics process automation, RPA, the ability to leverage technology in different ways, the ability to think differently and more creatively. And, and uh, you know, think about what we call the art of the possible, the ability to kind of look what's, you know, what's the potential for the business to kind of become a little bit more creative and innovative way into the future. And so the reality is if the CEOs don't demand it, it typically doesn't get done. So you would think the CIOs would lead the way there, the CTOs would lead the way there. They're kind of busy keeping the lights on and keeping the databases running and keeping the operations going. And so where I a CEO or where are I going to give guidance to a CEO? I would say you really kind of have to take the bull by the horns and it doesn't really matter if you're going to hire outside consultants or, you know, learn about it yourself and push for it in the organization. But you know, start asking the tough questions about how we're going to automate and digitally transform the areas of the business that haven't been transformed yet. And the metrics to understand what business value is going to come back uh, from that investment in the technology transformation and understanding the business case. So my guidance to CEOs, and they always look at me in a little bit more of a confused face, is that you really need to be leading that. And after they say, well, I have a CIO who uh, should be doing that. And I say, well, that person is probably busy running your business. And so this needs to be a board level decision that we're gonna spend a certain amount of money to go off and make this huge value decision within the business to automate things that have the potential to basically bring revenue back into the business. And so that's, that's on you, it's not on anybody else in the organization. Yeah, it really is. So, I mean, gauging from what you've said, how, how long do you think it's taken so far to where you're at at the moment with the conversations you're having with the CEOs and the CIOs for this cultural change to happen? I don't think most of them have really begun to think about it yet. I just don't, I don't see it as, uh, you know, certainly they understand what digital transformation is. There may be some planning underway. Um, but for the Global 2000 companies out there, the, the things that I see are more ad hoc in nature. You know, they're solving tactical problems. They're not looking at this in a strategic way to really kind of take the business into the 20th century or the 21st century in this case and understand what the potentials are for the different technologies out there to digitally transform the way in which they're doing business. And, and so, you know, the, the onus is on them because ultimately we've discussed this many times in the show. If they're not able to get in this creative, innovative space, they're not able to change as fast as the market's changing around them. You know, they're they're going to be in, uh, in in deep in deep quicksand pretty quick, and it's very difficult to get out of that. It's very difficult to innovate your way out of trouble, but it is easy to innovate your way to get ahead in your particular marketplace as long as you're willing to make the investment and take the risk. Yeah, it really is. And on a proportional level of the people you're talking to at the moment, how many? If you could give a percentage to it, how many CEOs are you talking to which are now more switched on to that digital culture environment shift? Oh, maybe maybe 10% of the ones that uh, understand what it is and, and what to do. And those are typically smaller companies. Those are you know, less than a billion dollar small businesses, which you know sounds weird that less than a billion dollars in revenue is a small business, but it is in the States. And so they're obviously more agile and they're more aggressive and they're more... Um, 
willing to invest and take some risks. The Global 2000 companies, they typically push a lot of that stuff downhill as tactical decisions, and that's where it has a tendency to get, get stalled out. So in other words, either the politics, um, the culture is not willing to change, they're not willing to adopt the technology, they're not willing to, to have the budget to pay for the digital transformation that needs to occur. There's lots of roadblocks that occur. Things that I can't change, I can only make recommendations. You know, I'm like a doctor, I can tell people to go run more and eat less, eat less bacon, you know, but they're gonna go out there and do what they wanna do. And I think that corporations are very much the same way. Yeah, 100%. And I agree, like, I wanna run less and I just wanna eat as much bacon as possible. <laughs> I think bacon's better for you than we thought. So maybe eat bacon and run. Yeah, good fat. I want that bacon sandwich on the go. There you go. <laughs> so look, it moves us on nicely, um, all that joking aside, it moves us on nicely to uh, the, 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 the three tips at the end of the show. So, you know, what would you say are the top three tips for digital transformation in an organization then, Dave? Yeah, number one, digital transformation is about the business, not just the technology. And so we have a tendency to kind of approach this stuff with whatever technology is cool. We have machine learning, RPA, robotics process automation, uh, all this other stuff that's popping up is you know kind of the buzzword du jour that we're running after. And this is really about how we're going to look at the business and transform the business and what enabling technologies we can leverage to transform the business as we define it. So I always start with the business case and with the business processes to understand where the inefficiencies are and where the opportunities are to automate and then back the technology into those requirements. And I think that's something that um, Global 2000 companies don't do typically. They'll chase a technology, they'll chase a cloud, they'll chase um, you know, uh, facial recognition technology, AI technology, pattern matching technology, big data technology without understanding where its use would be within the enterprise. And that's always something that, uh, that, that you need to deal with ahead of time. Make sure to leverage metrics. And so you gotta be able to prove the success of this. And so if we spend a half a billion dollars on doing digital transformation and it makes us all of a hundred million dollars in revenue, then that's a failure. And we need to basically have these ongoing real-time metrics so we can determine the value of this stuff and make the adjustments ongoing. And if we don't have these metrics in place, it's going to be very difficult for us to go back to our leadership at the board of directors and ask for more resources to do additional transformation unless we're able to prove the value. And then finally, you know, don't give up on the first one or two failures. I find people, you know, go out and, you know, take some risks with some uh, enabling technology and just fall on their face. And they may do it again and fall on their face again. Well, I got news for you. You may fall on your face three or four times before you get it right one time. You're going to have to, to figure out how to fail, learn from your failure, failures, and understand that you're bleeding the edge here and that you're doing things the first time in your organization. And we're going to make mistakes. We're going to pick the wrong technology. We're going to do things in the wrong way. We have to get up, lick our wounds, retool, and, and go back at it, or else we're just not going to get anywhere. So failure is really a matter of progress. It's not necessarily a matter of actual failure. Great tips there, Dave. And fail fast. I think that's the key to success, isn't it? You know, I think it's um, yeah a very important aspect you just mentioned there. Yeah, I always fail fast, faster than everybody else. <laughs> I don't know. It's a tight race between you and I. Then thanks for being part of the C Suite Show, Dave. It's always a pleasure. It's always a pleasure, Brad. Thanks for having me. Cheers, man. And thanks for watching, everyone. We really hope you enjoyed uh, watching this week's uh, C-Suite show. And remember, you can get Dave on Twitter, which is at David Linthicum. I'm also on Twitter, uh, at Nelson underscore Hilliard. For some reason, I always forget my Twitter handle. I have no reason why. Uh, but thanks for watching. And remember to like, subscribe, comment, and share these videos with your friends and colleagues. And um, also click that little bell in the corner, which is uh, for notifications if you didn't know already. Uh, thanks for watching, and uh, look forward to next week. <laughs>